Yes, sir, you can start. Okay, start one. Yeah, a very good afternoon to everyone. As convener of this Friday's online workshop on research scopes in additive manufacturing, I take immense pleasure in welcoming our most valuable session speaker, Dr. M. Durai Selvam. Professor, Department of Production Engineering, Dean, Planning and Development, National Institute of Technology, Trichrapalli. Before going on the session, I want to give you a small intro about our most valuable session speaker. Dr. M. Durai Selvam has completed his PhD in the area of laser cladding of turbine blades from Technical University of Boston, Germany in the year 2006 under DAAD Fellowship. He has completed his master's degree in manufacturing technology from National Institute of Technology, Tiruchirapalli, in 1998 in first class with distinction. He also graduated MBA from Madurai Kamarajar University, specialized in operations management in 2003 in first class. He is having more than 22 years of teaching experience. He was awarded Young Scientist by Department of Science and Technology, that is DST, Government of India, for a fast track project entitled Improvement of Erosion Resistance of Titanium Alloy Disc Brake Rotor through Laser Surface Melting. He has successfully completed more than 12 externally funded projects as principal investigator. Currently, more than seven projects are ongoing. Some of his notable funded projects are 3D modeling and engineering design validation of 12 meter E bus, and it was sponsored by Bharat AV Electricals Limited, that is BHL, Government of India, and it was a duration of 2018 to 2019, and the cost of the funded project is 34.4 lakhs. He has published more than 107 papers in various science citation index journals and has an H index of 20 and I10 index of 33. His areas of specialization includes laser surface engineering and tribology, laser micro machining, laser cladding, liquid impact erosion, synthesis of nanocomposites, process optimization and many more. He is active reviewer for various science citation journals including surface and coatings technology, Surface and Interface Analysis, LCS Material Science and Engineering, Journal of Material Processing Technology, Materials and Design, Journal of Advanced Manufacturing Technology. Doctoral degree has been awarded to more than 7 students under his research guidance. In addition, more than 13 students are presently pursuing PhD under his guidance. He has introduced Two elective courses on lasers in manufacturing and tribology for MTech manufacturing technology students. Sir, I take immense pleasure in welcoming you for this second day of our five days online workshop on research scopes in IT manufacturing. Sir, I very kindly hand over the session to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Uh, Dr. Simil, uh, for your nice introduction. And uh, I am very happy. Uh, to be present as one of the speaker uh, for this program and uh, yeah I will be giving a very short introduction uh, about uh, uh, the additive manufacturing uh, that we are working for quite some time. So uh, just now I shared the screen I hope uh, it is visible in the presentation mode and I request uh, some of the moderator uh, to be here uh, live on the program so that um, if there is any uh, hitches because some of the online programs, I will be changing the slide here and in the other end uh, there is no change of the slide or uh, my voice uh, uh, will be breaking. So if you alert me so that I can uh, try to rectify that one and um, uh, uh, hoping that uh, many of you will be using um, 
the laptops, uh, mobile devices uh, where the uh, what do you say um, the bandwidth uh, uh, may not be equal. Uh, so uh, I will uh, uh, I, I don't have any videos in order to avoid that one. Finally, I'll be making a very short presentation about that um, uh, our uh, facility and. Uh, I will uh, give a very brief introduction about additive manufacturing as uh, this is order of the day where uh, all our uh, manufacturing systems uh, that got disrupted uh, by this additive manufacturing um, uh, facility that is coming in the recent times. And uh, I will give a very brief classification of uh, those AIM processes and where we do have uh, the application and what are the facilities that are uh, available at NIT Trichy and what are the key challenges and the role of uh, AM in industry 4.0. So we need to connect beyond the uh, additive manufacturing, um, uh, studying about that one and um, uh, if um, that is being used for uh, highly innovative customized product. So beyond that, how it is going to be helpful uh, in filling the gap of uh, industry 4.0. Again, uh, this is a kind of uh, a cyber physical systems. Uh, very recently uh, being implemented and uh, all the manufacturing systems uh, are thinking about beyond automation and uh, in this uh, revolution uh, how this anti manufacturing uh, plays a vital role that also i will be give you a, a very brief uh, idea about that one and uh, at the end of the presentation if time permits i will uh, give a uh, one of my student uh, will give us um, uh, a short video demonstration uh, starting from um, loading the powder, uh, printing the component and taking out the component, uh, he will give a, a demonstration of our uh, facility. And uh, so I hope um, uh, to make that uh, 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 this presentation as lively as possible. <coughs> this additive manufacturing, um, it's not a very old technology. And um, uh, very recently, uh, in 1984, uh, it started with the stereolithography. That's the very first uh, method of uh, uh, proof that uh, came into picture. Uh, how layer by layer that we can uh, build a part and then uh, convert into a final product or a prototype. And uh, that is uh, what uh, the base or the uh, benchmarking system that had been developed by uh, one of the uh, person called uh, Charlie Hull and uh, another uh, peculiar aspect of this system is once you have a 3D model uh, that model uh, can be converted into a STL file and the STL file uh, will be sliced and the sliced uh, uh, model uh, sliced portions will be built layer by layer using any kind of uh, 3D printing technology. And finally, you can uh, realize the components. So when you look at the ASTM specification itself, it's a, a process of joining materials to make objects from 3D model data, usually layer upon layer as opposed to um, a subtractive manufacturing technology. So our traditional technology is uh, from the bulk material, uh, you subtract, you machine out, uh, you drill, you make some uh, shaping, and finally, you get into the final product. But uh, contrarily in the additive manufacturing, you'll be, um, what do you say, uh, adding material. And finally, you are coming out with that uh, final uh, product. And still, one of the limiting factor of additive manufacturing technology is uh, uh, the process uh, slow compared to traditional manufacturing. And uh, that is not, uh, what do you say, um, a limiting factor because additive manufacturing it has its own um, uh, requirement uh, for example uh, for complicated uh, design uh, a non-symmetrical uh, object when you wanted to build then um, definitely we need to go for uh, this additive manufacturing rather you need to if you follow the traditional manufacturing system you may need to make uh, the mold for it, uh, then uh, you need to um, uh, machine that one and um, uh, you cast it and then uh, finally you can realize the prototype. It's uh, very time consuming. And if uh, any small uh, design modification that you're supposed to make, you need to make a fresh mold. You cannot alter the mold. But here a simple computer uh, program uh, will uh, lead to 
making of different varieties variations when you uh, are trying to make a prototype and uh, beyond prototype the additive manufacturing systems nowadays found uh, very good applications in a mass production also so people started using mass production of components otherwise cannot be built with traditional systems so the complexity and uh, customization when you require additive manufacturing becomes a inevitable solution so later when we look at some of the applications uh, the customization requirement is too high in the recent times and the people look for a specific uh, shape specific color specific combination and where this industry 4.0 also trying to address this variety of requirement without uh, disturbing the mass production uh, facility and how you can include that varieties and uh, that is where a uh, lot of difference that is coming in and uh, the global market for uh, metallic additive manufacturing for aerospace is 1.9 billion in 2016 and it forecast to reach uh, 20 billion so very huge increase uh, in 2024 it's very near so the metal based additive manufacturing system is growing day by day uh, because of its uh, cost advantage and a very good flexibility in printing the parts and a uh, lot of such things are coming in and when you look at uh, some of the uh, sectors or verticals uh, which uses additive manufacturing uh, uh, methods or technologies uh, Uh, industry wise those are uh, motor vehicles uh, consumer products business machines medical academic aerospace likewise it goes and when you look at that uh, the automobile and consumer product that is occupying the major portion uh, when compared to other uh, related applications and um, uh, the requirement in automobile is uh, day by day increasing as well as in the uh, consumer product market and uh, if you have innovative uh, ideas uh, anything that can be print and uh, can be marketable so with that basic introduction uh, i will uh, uh, give some glimpse of information about uh, the different methods by which we can uh, make that uh, additive manufacturing uh, based product and uh, basically it can be characterized into three categories uh, liquid based powder based solid based and uh, uh, the base means what is the precursor material so if you are using a liquid resin or a polymer resin or a photo a polymer resin as a precursor material then uh, we can say it's uh, the substrate material based on that we are making the classification uh, we can comfortably term this as a liquid based and powder means the precursor material here is a powder and the solid is either it's in the form of a, a solid wire or a, a kind of a sheet so by which you start building your product so uh, we can uh, comfortably classify those things into these categories um yeah stereolithography jetting systems digital light processing are some of the examples and in the powder based it's a uh, selective laser sintering selective laser melting direct metal deposition electron beam melting are some of the examples and uh, fused deposition modeling sheet uh, stacking technologies are under the category of uh, solid based one i am not going to detail about uh, each one uh, much uh, because uh, when you uh, go through any the standard books you can get a lot of information about these systems so i will just give a very very brief idea about what is stereolithography what is uh, laminated object manufacturing what is um this uh, direct metal laser something like that uh later we uh, go and spend some time on what are the key challenges that we need to address so basically the stereolithography uh you need to have a, a photopolymer and uh, it's a, a kind of a thermoset resin right and uh, the uh, basics of this thermoset resin is whenever it is exposed to kind of uh, uv light preferably uv laser uh the thermo setting will happen right the so thermo setting will happen that means it becomes solidified and uh, after if uh, the ultraviolet laser passed onto the surface of a liquid thermo uh, thermo set resin this will get solidified and uh, you put another layer of that uh, thermo set polymer then again pass on the laser wherever you require to uh, get it solidified and finally you can realize the final product so very simple process 
and you need uh, to have a very good x-ray control accurate movement of the laser galvo systems and a photopolymer which can react very good uh, in uh, getting solidified corrosion system so likewise it will um, pass to over the photopolymer uh, get it solidified wherever it's required and then uh, you uh, apply the next coating of the photopolymer and uh, the process will get repeated in a jetting system uh, almost it is similar to that uh, uh, the stereolithography based system except that rather than uh, uh, coating a complete polymer uh, layer here uh, the drops of uh, the polymers are placed exactly to the place where you wanted to build the system so once uh, it's like uh, more of uh, uh, the inject printing so uh, you uh, put in that uh, uh, polymer wherever you require to create uh, a layer uh, then uh, pass on with a uh, light uh, uh, pass on with a uv light and uh, solidify that one and uh, the further layers are built up by lowering the uh, build plate by which you can realize finally the entire component so likewise uh, it uh, pours on the powder and at the meantime you can see that uh, the laser is uh, passing on that one to cure that one in uh, binder jetting uh, contrary to that uh, the previous case the material jetting here uh, no external um, heating element is uh, available uh, to uh, solidify uh, the material layers rather uh, a binder is used the binder wherever you are uh, pouring the binder the binder uh, will uh, stick on to the powder and become solidified and uh, the, so the powder material first is spread over the build platform using a roller and the print head uh, deposits the binder adhesive on top of the powder where required and the build platform is lowered by the modest layer thickness so if you do, uh, have a 40 micron or 100 micron layer thickness so you lower that uh, uh, platform and another layer powder is spread over the previous layer likewise the process is repeated uh, you can see that uh, from uh, here to here uh, layer by layer you uh, deposit the powder uh, and consolidate the powder with the help of a binder and uh, likewise you can see that uh, the binder is being um, uh, being placed wherever you need to consolidate the powder so likewise the process is repeated uh, to get the shape uh, digital light processing it's a little tricky process uh, where uh, you have a digital light projector uh, from the bottom you project the image uh, to the resin uh, which will try to uh, solidify and uh, you can uh, inversely uh, move the build platform by which slowly you can uh, build at a speed by which uh, it is getting solidified so it has a digital light projector uh, then you have a flash, uh, you have a flash and image of a layer across the entire platform and uh, you cure all points simultaneously. This is one of the advantages compared to all other processes where uh, either the curing or uh, the printing uh, that happens selectively at a particular point one at a time. But here uh, the entire uh, uh, layer of the image, one layer at a time simultaneously that you can expose to the light. Uh, flashlight that will uh, try to solidify. So the uh, digital micro mirror device uh, is a component made of thousands of micro mirrors used for navigating the light beam projected by the digital light projector. So uh, you have a light source, you have a lens and here you have a, a micro mirror which will uh, uh, multiply the light to the place where it has to uh, fall exactly to the shape of uh, the object you wanted to create. Uh, selective laser sintering, selective laser melting, uh, these are some of the uh, common processes which specifically uses laser uh, heat to melt and solidify uh, the material wherever it's required. And in the case of uh, selective laser uh, sintering, uh, tiny particles of plastic, ceramic or glass are uh, fused together by heat uh, from a high power laser to form a solid uh, three dimensional object. So we are just fusing. We are not uh, completely melting and uh, solidifying. So just uh, with the help of uh, uh, laser heat, we are fusing that one. And uh, once you fuse a particular layer, uh, a roller will apply a layer of powder, then the laser will center the powder according to the 3D file. 
and uh, the build platform will lower before applying a new layer of powder. So the process will get repeated and uh, finally you get uh, printed with a new object. So likewise you can see it uh, in this picture uh, in the G GIF image that uh, you form a layer, uh, pause on the laser where it's required to be um, required to consolidate or uh, um, fuse that material. Uh, selective laser melting, uh, there are other uh, jargons or uh, 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 words also been used generally. It's a direct metal laser melting, we call it as, or laser powder bed fusion, uh, laser powder bed, LPBF. Uh, thin layers of fine metal powders are evenly, uh, in the earlier case, laser uh, sintering, selective laser sintering, uh, mostly we don't use uh, metal powders. Only ceramics or glass or polymers where you just uh, apply heat to join together or fuse together. But here the powder itself get melted and uh, converted into a uh, solid. So, uh, but uh, the mechanism of applying uh, the uh, coating or the layers are uh, more or less similar, right? So this layer of uh, fine metal powder are evenly distributed using a coating mechanism onto your substrate plate that is passed into an indexing table that moves in the vertical z direction. So this takes place inside a chamber containing a tightly controlled atmosphere of inert gas. So uh, because whenever you are exposing uh, metal powder in an open atmosphere, there is a lot of chances of uh, picking up oxygen and get oxidized. <coughs> So um, generally, uh, in order to avoid uh, any such kind of uh, oxidation issue, the entire process need to be uh, performed in a confined environment. So once each layer has been distributed, uh, then you can move one step down, then uh, put the powder again, uh, then uh, melt wherever you require to uh, form a layer, then likewise you can repeat the process. Uh, this direct metal deposition, uh, this avoids the need for uh, having a powder bed, rather uh, you can directly uh, melt the powder and move your uh, laser head uh, or the working table uh, simultaneously or in a coordinated manner to get a uh, object printed on uh, any surface. And uh, this is more or less similar to uh, the laser cladding process. Laser cladding also we, same, uh, we do the same like uh, we, um, what do you say, uh, perform a kind of uh, uh, coaxials, uh, feeding nozzle will be there and the powder will be fed uh, in the coaxial nozzle and then it will get melted by the laser and uh, it get deposited over the material. So if you have a system like that, then you can directly uh, do the uh, building. This electron beam melting based additive manufacturing, it's a very recent innovation. And uh, compared to uh, the electromagnetic radiation that is coming out of a laser to uh, build a component uh, rather than uh, doing it uh, with electron beam, uh, it's not uh, having any kind of a heat, rather it's a very cool beam and uh, better uh, control of uh, uh, the beam uh, is uh, possible. Uh, the level of accuracy, the surface finish, uh, what you can achieve, also very nice. And uh, so many people prefer uh, electron beam melting in the recent times. The uh, system expense is very, very high, more than three, four times of uh, normal laser based metal additive manufacturing systems. But uh, once you find uh, uh, many users, uh, the cost of the system may come down. And only the limiting uh, uh, point of this uh, electron beam based additive manufacturing is uh, the entire thing need to be performed in a vacuum, right? So creating a vacuum, it's time consuming and you can't have a very big vacuum chamber. And when you have a very, very small chamber, the size limitations are there and the controlling that one, that's a little tricky one. So likewise, you put a layer of the powder, then um, use electron beam. Uh, and again, deflection of the electron beam, it's again uh, not so easy as we do with the simple uh, G codes and M codes in uh, laser or some simple uh, robo programming. Here uh, you need to apply the uh, magnetic deflection uh, by changing the electro potential of that one. 
So a lot of such uh, issues still limiting, but uh, this is uh, going to be equally uh, become important in the years to come, uh, where uh, we uh, even think about uh, replacing uh, the laser-based sintering systems with electron beam melting. Uh, the solid-based AM processes, it's most of uh, uh, you get a precursor material in the form of a solid and no metal uh, solid-based systems are available. So mostly for polymer uh, printing, this uh, solid-based systems are quite well used and the fuse deposition modeling, uh, FDM is one such example, uh, very well customized, com commercialized and uh, here you have a uh, uh, the starting precursor material in the form of a wire and the wire is fed uh, it get melted with a resistance heater and then it uh, poured over the place where you want to create a surface and then again you lower the bed create another layer lower the bed create another layer and you can simply build uh, <clears throat> any component by doing that and this is the fused deposition modeling uh, where you completely feed a wire uh, and then um, it is getting built over the surface. And laminated object manufacturing, similar to the laminations, what you normally uh, do of your uh, important documents or certificates, like right? so you have uh, this uh, polymer sheets uh, that get uh, uh, in between you normally put your certificate, and uh, there is a roller, a heated roller you might have seen. And once you pass on the uh, two. Uh, polymer sheets uh, inside that one it will get joined together uh, due to the heating almost similar uh, method uh, by which uh, you have that uh, uh, sheets uh, then you use a heating roller to join with that one then use a kind of a laser cutter to cut out of uh, the material what is not required then again put one more layer likewise layer by layer you can uh, create a a laminated uh, uh, object it's a uh, called laminated object manufacturing so this is a kind of a process uh, that's well used in uh, prototype making so here you can see that uh, wherever you have need to have that object uh, around that object it's uh, cutting that one then use uh, the next layer is coming then uh, it is uh, cutting the place where uh, you need to put it on the object then it is getting placed and then uh, the roller, heated roller, the roller is pausing and the process is getting repeated. Uh, from the application point of view, when you look at aerospace, a uh, lot of uh, aerospace related uh, applications are emerging and uh, uh, Dr. Ram Prabhu uh, from um, Semilag, who is going to give a lecture on this uh, AM technologies uh, used, used in lay, uh, defense. Uh, he may give more insight into that um, uh, where in aerospace industry you do find a lot of applications and uh, why in aerospace uh, we wanted to apply additive manufacturing technologies um, one thing is uh, the reduction of failure and improving the reliability that's very very important in um, uh, <coughs> air, aircraft, air, uh, uh, aircraft or uh, aerospace components um, uh, the reliability is almost uh, one, it's very high, 0.99, even uh, uh, very small failures, it's uh, unaffordable. And uh, if you think about uh, using this technology for aerospace, uh, one of the major uh, breakthrough is parts consolidation, which is otherwise very difficult with uh, conventional systems. You need to produce different parts, assemble together and uh, give the final component or a product. And the parts consolidations, when you say uh, that um, um, here, one example, it's the AM fuel nozzle of uh, GE uh, for the new leap passenger jet engine. Uh, they claim it's a uh, five times more durable. Uh, why? Because earlier it has uh, multiple uh, parts. Now, uh, only with the five part, they completed that one. So what is that thing that you can print? Uh, with that uh, AM system, uh, uh, the sports consolidation is quite helpful. And uh, any complex nickel alloy uh, jet compression liners, for example, uh, which is uh, which needs a lot of uh, uh, complicated uh, traditional manufacturing to be applied to realize the component, which uh, is easily can be done using AM system, uh, whatever be the complexity of the shape. And uh, you can see at uh, one aero engine 
uh, as a prototype built by GE, which is uh, a complete running engine. Uh, in a single steps, they have created uh, the entire 3D printed engine. So it's a marvelous technology where with the assemblies, sub assemblies, uh, this can be printed. Um, the bottom, there is an aerospace part where they made a, a kind of a, a honeycomb structure um, by which uh, they are projecting a very good material uh, uh, reduction uh, by which uh, uh, you can see the number. It is 63% lighter compared to the previous ship uh, without any uh, violation of the structural integrity of the system. So such a kind of uh, uh, advancements that is uh, happening in the additive manufacturing technology arena. Uh, you can see that the uh, turbine blades, uh, turbine blades uh, that are um, uh, very expensive and uh, machining the turbine blades into the uh, aerodynamic shape, again it's a challenge and uh, when I have seen uh, some of the networking industries uh, where uh, this machining of the turbine blades, um, they have a uh, high cost special purpose machines which uh, is uh, very difficult to operate if you made a small mistake uh, that will lead to the uh, uh, problem of uh, the final finish of the system and uh, again the turbine blade once you build it has to have a kind of uh, what do you say um, uh, a thermal barrier coating and it has to have a cooling hole and uh, you cannot put a cooling hole and uh, make a thermal barrier coating. Uh, you have to make a thermal barrier coating and together with that you need to um, uh, drill a cooling hole. And the cooling holes normally uh, having a very very uh, low or small diameter uh, from 100 micron even sometimes uh, to 1 mm. And uh, this is passing through that entire aerodynamic shape of the blade. So a lot of complex post processing is required. Uh, to finish the final braid and uh, get it to that engine ready. But with the AM system, you can print the entire end-to-end -end thing. Even the thermal barrier coating that can be printed, but normally they don't do. So they will uh, print that uh, blades with the uh, cooling holes and then uh, they do the coating and uh, in the top they will open this uh, hole by some processes. In a medical, it's finding a wonderful application of uh, implants uh, in whatever be that implants like uh, dental or an orthopedic uh, and you can see that uh, the customization uh, here plays a major role as I said earlier and um, the size orientation of the hip or uh, the, your uh, bones uh, are unique uh, from uh, person to person so if uh, most of the cases uh, what is available in the off the shelf uh, you get that uh, fixer to your uh, knee or your uh, femur bone when it's got broken. But that uh, it's a compromise of uh, the common system, the common measurements, and what is the exact measurements of uh, your uh, 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 system. So uh, you can exactly uh, measure or uh, capture uh, your uh, uh, posture as well as the dimensions of your uh, uh, broken part and exactly when print uh, that will match exactly what you require. And in uh, dentistry, it's uh, finding a lot of applications uh, to artificially create the, uh, the root or as well uh, uh, other implanting devices. And uh, uh, in the bottom picture, you can see it's a 3D printer cortex cast. And whenever uh, you are curing a broken uh, bone, uh, normally they use uh, a very big uh, uh, bandage using a blast of Paris and uh, this is um, so heavy uh, yeah the blast of Paris is so heavy and uh, it's um, um, uh, it's irritating to the skin in most of the cases and uh, until uh, the, you get cured three to four weeks uh, you have to wear that one and um, rather an aesthetic uh, 3d printed cortex when you can uh, uh, print exactly uh, to the need uh, uh, so it's look aesthetic as well as lightweight you can create this lightweight and uh, uh, even you are wearing or not uh, it is completely such a low weight and uh, in a transportation again it's uh, uh, that is where it's playing a vital role some of the complicated components like you have seen in this picture 
even they are going with the mass production uh, otherwise uh, producing that one uh, doing the machining uh, doing the carving and all those things are completely very difficult and uh, this is uh, one classical example of uh, the bus electric shuttle uh, wholly uh, yeah which um, electric uh, this got uh, what you say uh, completely 3d printed even uh, not necessarily only small component you can go with the very big components of 3d printing um, uh, even the engine entire engine block that you can 3d print uh, the entire chassis of a bike or the front chassis of a car that can be 3d printed uh, consumer products that is uh, booming a uh, very huge and a uh, lot of varieties lot of interesting shapes uh, why it is booming is otherwise it's very difficult to create using conventional processes here you can see it's a kind of a, a honeycomb handle normally very difficult to imagine uh, if you uh, conventionally produce that one very difficult to produce then uh, colorful headphones uh, razors chairs and this uh, leading uh, shoe manufacturers like uh, Nike Adidas are coming into 3D printing shoes and uh, they will measure your uh, feet exactly and they will produce a, a 3D print uh, a shoe exactly to match your feet uh, because when you go to the shop uh, either it's a six, seven, eight uh, scale uh, they will uh, measure your feet length and your feet is when it is 5.5 you need to adjust with six there is no scale available for to produce 5.5, 5.6 something like that but here you can do that again when you go for purchasing the helmet uh, sometimes uh, you feel like uh, you put something on the uh, head that is crushing your head sometimes it is too loose a uh, lot of such issues are there so if, uh, if they measure the head and exactly to fit uh, uh, a helmet it's a, a great wonder even uh, 3d printing shirts are coming in uh, 3d printing uh, cloth materials so print exactly what you need so don't uh, go uh, with the oversized one or a compromised shape so what are the additive manufacturing systems available at uh, nad trichy and we have one uh, fdm based 3d printer fused deposition modeling based 3d printer and uh, it has a uh, one cubic uh, feet uh, capacity that you can build and the multi-material is possible like uh, this abs polymer asa uh, or uh, pla so uh, we can produce uh, with an accuracy of uh, plus or minus 200 micrometer so it's a very very good system uh, that uh, we are doing a lot of works in this one and uh, so these are some of the components that we have printed using uh, that our existing fdm 3 printer and very recently we added up on uh, metal additive printer uh, 3d metal printer uh, that costs us around the five crores and uh, it's uh, Ampro systems from uh, Australia and uh, our uh, system is capable of building uh, volume of uh, 500 into 5250 uh, mm and the layer thickness that you can vary between 20 to 100 micron with an accuracy 50 micron and we can uh, print at a reasonably higher printing rate of uh, um, 5 centimeter cube per hour to 50 centimeter cube per hour uh, because this is one of the unique system of uh, having a two uh, laser, twin laser system. So parallelly, uh, one laser when it is doing operation here and another laser doing finishing the operation of your entire build volume. And uh, uh, we have a separate gallows scans for uh, uh, different one. Right now we have parameter for uh, uh, seven different powders like uh, in aluminum alloy, it's an aluminum silicon, 10 magnesium. Then steel, it's uh, 316L, 15.5pH. Uh, titanium, we have pure titanium as well as titanium, 6 aluminum, 4 vanadium. This uh, grade 5 titanium that has uh, uh, medical related applications, you can print any uh, implants. And nickel, it's uh, mostly on uh, aerospace material. We have uh, both uh, Inconel 709 and 625. So here, uh, how the powder is uh, fed and uh, using a screw feeder, how we can uh, use that one recorder uh, some of the things i will ask uh, one of my students to give a demo on that one then uh, uh, this is a regional market uh, in asia europe uh, north america in rest of the world what is 
the total additive manufacturing business going to be its um, tremendous improvement is projected for example in north america from 2 billion to 7 billion you can expect in asia specific 1 to 5 billion in 2025 they are expecting so it's a, obviously a growing market and if you have uh, put in some investment in it uh, you can definitely take a revenue out of it and our system also uh, open for uh, consultancy if you have any requirement of uh, printing metal components of the available powders with us uh, uh, we can uh, give you the costing based on the size of your component and our uh, 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 pricing are more competitive uh, compared to that uh, other outside market prices so these are some of the uh, key challenges uh, printing a pot with the right shape uh, because uh, most of the metal uh, that will try to shrink when uh, it get uh, solidified so that is one of the issue and uh, pot qualification who will certify whether it's okay or not and in a bulk material you can do tensile strengthening impact strength flexural strength testing all those stuffs but in a metal additive manufacturing system okay it uh, clears that one but in long run uh, how it performs and uh, uh, but in the recent times uh, they are working a certification uh, that is uh, for many companies they have got and uh, in uh, normal commercial uh, flights we have a lot of energy manufacture systems available so which raw materials and machines for which results that is again very tricky uh, we are using some kind of a powder that's having a powder particle size varying between uh, uh, 15 to 45 micrometer and if you use a higher particle size what would happen so likewise a lot of questions so is it really what uh, it's a very big question uh, for small industries where the requirement is too small or they uh, don't require uh, the prototyping uh, requirement to quite often their investment in energy manufacturing uh, may not be a justifiable one rather they can go with the normal system but when you are doing a lot of customization R&D and you are moving towards industry 4.0 system the energy manufacturing system is very much essential so operators being put at risk do not uh, really uh, direct exposure to the laser that is not good for uh, any human but still uh, the operation is highly safe with the class 4 laser safety and a lot of safety measures are there and you don't need to worry about it uh, tracking parts to ensure uh, regulatory compliance uh, like linking the serial numbers with patients raw materials used location operations these are the things we need to look it up on and pot size and material limitations always there and the powder availability specific to the machine that's again a critical and um, uh, the size of the pot when it's too uh, big uh, printing with a uh, metal printing system it's obviously uh, expensive so finally i will touch upon about uh, the role of uh, additive manufacturing systems in industry 4.0 Hope you are aware that uh, what is industry 4.0 as it is the fourth industrial revolution that started happening in the year uh, 2010. Uh, this was introduced by Germans uh, and it's a kind of a base for smart, uh, smart manufacturing system or smart factory where the machines collaborate within themselves and uh, try to uh, perform or adjust the operations uh, among themselves. Uh, in order to uh, make it uh, in a proper manner and um, uh, it is a combination of uh, different uh, disciplines where uh, you need to understand about uh, how you are capturing the data of uh, the machining operation how you are pushing it to the cloud and uh, using data analytics concepts uh, that is being analyzed um, then finally you get into what you say uh, a kind of uh, uh, final system so uh, the machines are completely connected wirelessly and uh, the sensor collect the information push to push to the cloud and you have a very good AI and machine learning systems that will understand the data and give the proper command signal uh, what the machine is supposed to do so there is no human intervention and uh, it uh, does the operation does the operation uh, continuously without any issue and uh, uh, this is not a kind of an automation beyond automation uh, how that system smartly collaborate with each other and uh, uh, it produces a final result. And uh, in that, uh, our AM system plays a vital role because um, when you go with a 
multiple varieties and your system is accommodating that kind of a variety then how uh, the system uh, can accept that variety it's only with uh, am based systems otherwise uh, you, you need to put in a lot of investment in creating separate assembly lines or manufacturing lines uh, to cater to the needs so um, this industry 4.0 it's characterized by four fundamental uh, foundational technologies applied along the value chain one is connectivity data and computational power like uh, how your uh, uh, sensors uh, accurately collect the data what is the capability of iot and the cloud technology blockchain all those things are involved and the human machine interaction uh, using virtual and augmented reality uh, actually what happens in this industry 4.0 you create a parallel running factory uh, virtually and uh, you um, do thousands of varieties of combinations and from that you can understand the better uh, uh, a better optimized system out of it and you have our robotics and automation everything the analytics and intelligence it's advanced analytics machine learning artificial intelligence all those things help in uh, understanding the system Now, advanced engineering where it comes that it to manufacturing exam 3d printing renewable energy nanoparticles uh, this will really help in uh, uh, realizing the real benefit of industry 4.0 so um, uh, with that i close now uh, maybe i will invite my student to give a short overview about our system so that you can visualize how uh, the part can be loaded uh, that um, uh, can be printed using our 3d printing system so we have a, a powder bed fusion based uh, 3d metal printer and uh, uh, how uh, from the start to end uh, we are printing the system that uh, he will explain so uh, the we have that 3d printer uh, aligned with uh, one of the, the startup that's run by me Uh, even though it is available in our institute, so either way you can approach uh, to utilize the system. So I will uh, shortly share this, uh, unshare that one, and then um, he will uh, share the video and then uh, continue the presentation. It's uh, just about uh, maybe uh, less than ten minutes, I think. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? It has gone somewhere. Sir, how to share? Share video. How can I send you video? Okay. Run man, I think. Okay. Don't go here. Share. Okay. 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 Now share to click here. Click in that share. Now go to the video. Uh, now you play. Play the video. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So this is the metal additive manufacturing facility at NIT Trichy. Uh, this is our three D printer, and this is the powder handling system that we have. Uh, this is the vacuum conveyor that is used to uh, reduce the powder, and this is the docking station. This is a sieving unit to produce good powders. This shows the Ampro print controller that is associated with the 3D metal printing system. Various features of the Ampro print controller are being demonstrated uh, in a brief way. I'll explain all these aspects in a step-by-step -step manner when we go for printing the part. So this is the powder silo, and uh, this chamber holds the Uh, powder intake system. That is, the topmost part is the silo, followed by a screw feeder. This is mainly used to uh, intake the powder into the three D printer system. So the operator is opening the chamber. The bottom part is called the build chamber. And here, if you can see, the left part is the recoater system. And uh, this is where uh, we are using the Ampro print controller. now we'll uh, go for the operating procedure for uh, building one complete part so the first step is to take the mount plate uh, uh, build plate out so we are uh, lowering the build chamber by using the ampro print controller we are ejecting it out so 
So using a forklift truck, we are mounting the uh, build plate onto the build chamber. Uh, we are just checking the recorder movement. So uh, whatever we have done so far, I'm explaining it once again in the amperprint controller. As you can see in the uh, right hand side, the build chamber is coming outside. Uh, then we are lowering the uh, build plate into the build chamber and we are sending it once again inside using the Ampro print controller. Next step is the leveling of build plate. Using a leveling indicator, we need to ensure that the flatness tolerance is within 0 0.20 mm. So this is the motion control parameters that are in the Ampro print controller. Using this part, we can lower our uh, upward movement of uh, build platform can be achieved. Next step is to import the parts. So the CAD file in the STL format has to be first sliced and converted into a file format called CLI. Only then it can be input into the Ampro print controller. And the scrolling bar is the one where it is showing the layer wise information of the part. This is the powder feed stage. Using the machine control tab, we can uh, use the options to, to open or close the silo wall or priming the recorder uh, re or purging the recorder and starting the screw feeder. So this is the silo wall open or close. The next step of this operating procedure would be the preheating of the build plate. So we are just checking the screw feeder is working or not. So preheating of build plate is the next step. As you can see, the material is 316L stainless steel and the preheating needs to be done along with uh, inerting the uh, build chamber up to 0.2% oxygen needs to be achieved by inerting the chamber. So this is the operation stage. But as you can see, the recorder is moving from the left to towards the right. So in the camera that is inbuilt inside the uh, builder chamber, we can see the recorder movement. Once the recorder movement is completed, uh, the bed will be lowered by one layer thickness so that the next layer of powder can be deposited over the build plate. Ah, this is the refilling of recorder. Once the recorder is uh, not having any powder, it goes to the home position and the screw feeder is responsible for refilling the recorder with fresh powder. You can control the dosage of the powder. This is unique to the Ampro machine. And uh, this is the a uh, close view of the part building. As you can see, once the recorder moves to the extreme position, laser is selectively uh, melting the powder particles in the area where the material is there, followed by lowering of the build platform by a uh, one, mm th uh, one uh, layer thickness.
So once the process is complete, uh, I, that is all the layers, layers are complete. We are going to uh, take out the uh, build away. So first step is to clean the uh, chamber completely. Then we are removing the build chamber outside. We are using, we'll be using the vacuum conveyor to completely remove the powder from the build plate. So this is the build part that is uh, kept over the uh, build plate. This is the powder handling system. The entire powder that is taken away from the build plate are transferred to the vacuum conveyor through which one silo is completely filled. This silo will be taken away from the vacuum conveyor and will be kept over the saving unit. So this is a saving unit. On top of it, we are placing the used powder. Once we turn on the sieving process, we can collect the sieved powder in the bottom. This is especially useful to use the recycled powder and uh, reduce the powder wastage. And after this, we will be using a wire cut EDM machine to cut the part. So this is one complex lattice structure that we have uh, produced in our selective laser melting machine. And uh, these are other sample parts, other surfaces offered uh, in our uh, unit. Thank you. So thank you. I am uh, done with that. We are done with that. Uh, so if you have any question, probably you can ask me. Fused deposition modeling uh, that is uh, purely for uh, polymer based one and uh, don't mix up uh, metal with FDM and uh, of course we can think about having a metal wire uh, getting melted and uh, deposited over uh, layer by layer. Um, rather they have uh, addition process what you call uh, direct metal deposition uh, rather than using a wire feeding uh, you can use uh, uh, powder and do that. Uh, which is more convenient to operate rather than uh, having it in a wire form. Yes, John Solomon, that is my answer for your question. Yeah, for uh, Amalan, uh, as already told, uh, the automobile manufacturing industry that is having a major share of using additive manufacturing facility for a lot of their critical parts. 
and uh, it is playing a, a very important role and uh, in the years to come uh, you can see many more uh, such uh, usage of uh, components uh, in automobile industry. Availability of different size of powders, I don't understand your question very clearly, uh, but uh, certain systems based on uh, the uh, powder feeding nozzles as well as uh, uh, the recoater, that is very important. So the recoater through which the powder is getting fed and finer the powder, uh, less will be the porosity and easy to uh, melt and uh, uh, consolidate. Uh, so, uh, using the different size of powders, uh, normally they do, don't do. Every system uh, based on their build uh, capability, they have a specific powder range in which you have to operate. Okay, if no more questions, uh, thank you very much. Oh. Yeah, good afternoon to everyone. This is really a wonderful day. I thank you, Dr. M. Dunaiselvam, Professor, Department of Production Engineering, Dean Planning and Development, NIT Trichy. It was a really a wonderful session. Sir, you have elaborated the metal additive manufacturing facility at NIT Trichy. Really, we feel that it was a nice experience. Uh, for us to uh, learn about uh, this additive metal additive manufacturing and we feel that really we have a hands-on it was really a hands-on experience for us this area is very uh, we are not aware about the area most of them are not aware about this area and we are able to learn about the machines and then how it has been used in the fabrication final fabrication work so we learned a lot it was really an eye-opener session for many of us who are working in this field. It will be very useful for our research work. So we will surely be in touch with you, sir, for in the future to clear our doubts and we, to learn more about this uh, additive manufacturing process. So we, uh, this, pres this presentation was really a good and it was a complete presentation, well-organized manner. Starting from, from the beginning, uh, the, from the till the end of the session, it was very interesting. The introduction was nicely explained. And also, uh, from even the beginners can able to uh, learn a lot from the presentation. And then process of additive manufacturing, various process and this concepts are explained. Especially the role of additive manufacturing industry 4.0. The evaluation was uh, made very clear. So the 2021 uh, decades were very important. Many industries are focusing on uh, software solutions to meet the requirement of additive technologies. The evolution will fuel the next generation software tools, which will drive the additive manufacturing forward in the industrialization. So we all benefited from this uh, workshop. And uh, my sincere thanks uh, to Dr. M. Dresuram sir for providing a nice uh, presentation. Thank you, sir. And then I also like to thank our management for giving us the opportunity to conduct a such an interesting, useful workshop. Also, I thank our correspondent, sir. And also, I thank our principal, Dr. S. Ramachandran, sir, for uh, supporting to conduct this workshop. Also, thank our HOD, sir, Mr. C. Danish, for supporting us to conduct the workshop in a smooth manner. I sincerely thank Dr. P. Seville. Professor Department of Mechanical Engineering for organizing this wonderful session. Also, thank Mr. Anadraman, who is in the backstage and is the is the host of the, this workshop. I also thank all the faculty members of Mechanical Engineering Department of SA Engineering College. Last but not least, uh, I would like to share my thanks, special thanks. I want to thank uh, participants for this uh, cooperation for attending the workshop uh, from the beginning till the end. Uh, my special thanks to our participants. Thank you, everyone.
thank you prabhakar for your compliments so uh, i'll be leaving the meeting uh, thank you for the opportunity thank you very much